Welcome to The Rec Room with Mandy and Mio, a podcast about books and the people who write them. Today I was like watching, I was watching a movie on um, Cinema One Originals YouTube channel. Oh, nice. Very yeah. good. Yeah, but... There was a thing that really bothered me because the film that I was watching was like really, like it was really meditative, um, and like especially the first like I it's two hour it was a two hour long movie and especially like the first hour of the movie, there were it's broken up into a lot of these like um, meditative segments where like the characters are talking to someone who like like it's like clearly like. Oh, I remember seeing you in a dream. Ganon. Like it's very, it's very dreamlike and meditative. But then the thing that really, who was in this? Uh, is it an old movie? It, it's not that like old. 90s? I, I'm not sure how much I should say about this film. But then, like, it's not. Okay. It's definitely not 90s. It's definitely. It was definitely like in the last 10 years. The <gasps> thing. The thing was like, as I was, but I had only heard of this movie today. I was sort of like, kind of, yeah, uh, like. I ended up seeing like a an article that was like recommending it and saying like oh it's on CNN I uh, sorry it's on CNN whoops I, I it's, on like, one. it's yeah it's on Cinema One and then um you can watch it on YouTube I was like okay so yeah well, I, I I've got some time to spare I need to relax so I'll watch it and then the thing was like I I mean I guess you know this is like also like one of Cinema One's like revenue generators. But like it was sort of funny that they turned on the ads for for, for the, the movie? movies on YouTube. So they so, so they, like so there's like commercials. Yeah, they were and they would be in the middle, not like at not just at the start of the movie, but in the middle of the movie, the movie would cut to commercial. They really no, I think yeah, it was like that. But Cinema One does that though. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, so which, I feel like okay, that's yeah, pretty that's true. Gets and like. Like, you know, like thinking back, like w- the way we grew up with certain movie channels, it's like, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. But it just became so funny that like certain characters would have this very long and weighty reflection. And like you're expected, like I can only imagine that when people saw this in the cinemas, they were expected to sit with the knowledge of what they've just been told. And then kind of yeah. just like sit in quiet and like there would be long yeah. shots. Like we're talking about Love Diaz like type long yeah, shots. Yeah. But what not, <laughs> but they're not. But you know, it's not love. Yes. But then, um, yeah. there was one like in particular that I found like really egregious because it was like this Lola character, <laughs> and then she's oh, like, God. you know, like being convinced by her daughter, like, yeah, you, come on, why don't you move in with us, na? And then, like, you know, the Lola doesn't seem to be paying attention, and then she's just staring out into the distance, and she looks really forlorn, and then she says. Like she, I mean, she basically says in Tagalog, and it's translated as, um, "Have you ever heard this kind of quiet before?" Okay. And then Vigla on Monday dot com. I always <laughs> use this schedule. I was like, no, no, don't tell me about Monday. If you run a, if you run a team, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should yeah. use I was Monday. Like, I should have asked you to cue it because, like, I know you heard. Well, the, yeah, the no, because we've used way it more than I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So funny. Where I was like, wait, oh, wait, come wait. On. So, what movie is this? Yeah, uh, okay. The movie is called Islands, and it's by Wami Alcazar. Oh, but wow. then, yeah. Huh. So that was my day today. Uh, and now we are here at the end of our day, recording a little old podcast. At the end of my life. <laughs> at the end of my life, and this podcast is of course called the Rec Room with Mandy and Mew, where we ask the yeah. question: When does a writer's work become required reading? In each episode. We take popular authors of the day and review each entry in their bibliographies to see just how close these writers get to the sweet spot between mainstream breakout success and traditional literary sensibility. I'm Mia. I'm Mandy. And I don't know about you, but I'm a little nervous. I you weren't... Oh, okay. I thought you were going to make <laughs> episode because. Yeah, yeah, no. Same. Uh, we are we? doing a mini series. Are we gonna preempt? Oh, okay. Well, we're doing a mini series on Zadie Smith. We've been mm-hmm. doing a, a, a mini series on her fiction, on her novels, for a while now, for a few months, and we're coming around to the tail end of her fiction bibliography. Uh, and now we're 
this episode uh, is going to be talking about her. We're going to be talking about her fourth novel, uh, N.W. And the reason I say that I'm nervous to talk about this um, novel. And we, we are you going to preempt it like what we did in Autograph Man? How do you mean? Because in Autograph Man at the beginning. Oh, uh, no, I, good like... question. I, I don't think so. I feel like no, because oh, okay. I, I, I kind of want to argue and or not really argue, but like discuss and like figure out how I really feel through this episode. Uh, yeah, because I don't know how I feel about this book. Um, yeah, this is a Same. this is a very interesting. I mean, like this is a very interesting book to talk about. Uh, and part of it comes from the fact, I think, that out of all the novels that we've read, or at least out of all the the miniseries we've done so far, when we're when we reach this point in um, Zadie Smith's bibliography, this book suddenly feels like it's been written by somebody else. Yes. Right? Do you feel that way? Yeah. I mean, like, there yeah. are a lot of things that seem similar. Like, there's, uh, yeah. like, the preoccupation with, like, certain neighborhoods of London, which, you know, mm-hmm. could be attributed to where she grew up as well. But then, like, uh, and then there's also her, like, sort of her love for language, like, her penchant for, like, turns of phrase and, like, you know, like, mixing it up, the, the use of literary language with slang. But then th- this novel, I think, it it doesn't go down. Like, it really feels like um, this is the debut of another author entirely. Someone who feels yes, like they've, they, they've broken away from what they've been doing before. Yeah. And now they've, like, tried to go down, like, another road. They do something new and then somebody was like, this is what you're supposed to be doing and we'll publish you now. And then she was like, great. And then she did. And she could have put this under somebody else's name and we would have been like, yeah. Well, okay. Right. When, when when did you get the sense? Like, do you, do you have a, a sense of when in the book you felt like, oh, this is, this feels like a different book. Do you remember when that happened for you? Um, Maybe halfway through part one pa lang. Okay. Because, you know, or like, I would say also just in terms of like opening to that first page and uh no sorry let's say when the dialogue started to come in yeah for like the first part i was like oh why is it like this like why does it look like this yeah and then uh i was like oh she's never really played around with like form that much right and i guess the most is like in like in on beauty when she puts the emails but that's not yeah, this battle. is like radically so different compared to that. Yeah, this one's literally like, oh, this is how this part's gonna be written. Oh, there are texts now. Oh, <laughs> what's happening? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, it's uh, this is a completely different point of view. Yeah, I think that too. Like when it changes point of view, like you know, all these things aren't necessarily bad. But yeah, it's just like nakakagula. It's nakakagula. Yeah, lang. and it's, or, it's like, even it, different from the way she does it. Because that's what she did also in White Teeth, where she was changing perspective and she was like using different voices. He, yeah, but then isn't that in White Teeth it was all still third person? Yeah, yeah, but this book was also but this one third was it person? Am I was did it? I make that up? I think it was also third person. Yeah, dude, it's also third person. Oh, okay. I thought there were parts where it seemed, or maybe I just got confused no, because I, I was I, so I, yeah. <laughs> anyway, like yeah, I, yeah, but it it feels like certainly different. And I mean, like I mentioned this on the yeah. podcast before, but like I remember. Uh, trying to read this book like uh, a few years back and then putting it down not because I didn't like it like I was like I Mm -hmm. think I went I got through the first part I was in the middle of the second part and then I just stopped for some reason and I couldn't remember why and I was trying to track where exactly I'd stop but I I did not I could not figure out I was like oh no no now everything after the first part seems new but I remember really liking it uh, through the first part um, and and now that I have the context of her earlier work now I'm sort of now a little more like mm-hmm. curious like trying to break down like I wonder how uh, things mm-hmm. changed up for her uh, but that's also of course where the context comes in the uh, which we have some here uh, for this book so uh, On Beauty the last book that we discussed was published in 2005 
And it was at the time when she had become like a, she had gotten a fellowship at Harvard. And mm-hmm. so that was around 2005. And then she sort of just stayed on in the States to work as a teacher of fiction. Uh, she taught fiction for a while at the Columbia University School of the Arts. And then in 2010, she became a tenured professor of fiction at NYU. Uh, yeah. and then Where she was my friend's prof. Oh, for real? Did she have any yeah. interesting stories about that time? Uh, no, because at the time I didn't really know who Zadie was. But yeah. So past knowing her name, I didn't know her any work. So like she would not. I didn't ask like Quento or whatever. Uh, but it, it really wasn't until much later in life that in li- in life, or like um, just like maybe recently that I like recalled that and I was like, oh shit. That was I remember she was on my friend's um thesis panel. Oh. Oh, that yeah. must be, I wonder what that must be like. Yeah, cuz <laughs> cuz that's how I found out because um I reviewed I I helped proofread the thesis. Yeah. And then you know how when you write a thesis you put like parang what is it? And like uh, in completion of blah blah blah. Yeah, and yeah. And then it, some requirements have you put your panelists? Oh. Zadie was in the panel. Oh. Was it yeah. was it a fiction Although, thesis or a critical thesis? No, that is the interesting thing. Um she my friend was like a uh like a culture student. Interesting. Like under not like it was she was like in a what do you call that? Um uh, well, it was arts also? integrated courses. Oh, she was okay. in the like it inter- was integrated inter- courses, in like an interdisciplinary studies. Yes, kind yeah. Of thing. So she was doing like a social cultural study on something. Very, her yeah. this was I uh, will just say her thesis was medjo about Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> so and then you know, yeah, so Sadie was in the panel, and I just remember her saying, "Yeah, I'm really actually nervous for Sadie the most because I think Sadie was the most senior prof." Yeah, in yeah. The- panel she was tenured in 2010 and she was tenured yeah so like i didn't know that until now yeah so that, yeah, that's why yeah. i was like oh that makes a lot of so, more sense uh, and then she still teaches there if i'm not mistaken uh and then like my understanding is like oh, wow. in the summers is when she goes back to london but most of the time she's in new york uh to teach uh it's after 2010 that she publishes nw in 2012 and that's the longest gap of time between novels because with the first three novels, with White Teeth, Autograph Man, and On Beauty, she had been publishing them in like two to three year like time spans. And now yes. here's like a seven year gap uh, without any Zadie Smith novels. So 2012, NW comes out, and it's, it's very clearly a different book. But she was also like still very proactive with her writing. Like she had written a book of essays uh, in between, the, in the time in between. She'd edited a collection of fiction. That was her first one, right? Yeah, yeah. And then she was also, like, publishing regular articles as a critic. So she was, like, definitely still, like, percolating ideas about what she was going to write next. Uh, And, like, I was reading some interviews where she was talking about how being away from London helped her to have that sort of critical distance that Mm -hmm. helped her to think more about what she could mine from it uh, in terms of material. Which is something I noticed, by the way, like coming from White Teeth and then this book and then like we're starting to now read uh, the next book, which is Swing Time. She she's like able to mine like a surprising amount of like material, like from like what is ostensibly the same experiences. Like, I mean, like, you yes. know, like, I mean, obviously, like a lot of these are like experiences that are uh, relatable to a lot of people, like coming from an estate. But it's, it's sort of like. Now I'm like kind of like realizing like oh she she can do that she can actually take yeah the same, she's good at like yeah like, rerouting sh- yeah exactly. the same thing the same character details yeah. and and then but making it feel like fresh and it's not yeah. like being recycled or anything like for all we know these are all people in one extended universe and yeah just yeah it's like Zadie's N W verse N W U and 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 to that point uh, that even extends to the exact location of this novel so nw is set in the kilburn area of northwest london and i looked it up that's uh, what nw means by the way yeah, for the people who yeah who are yeah it's it's all separated British, into, listen to us? Yeah. yeah yeah and like their postal codes um so nw northwest london uh and it's set in the kilburn area of northwest london and kilburn is a district of brent which is the same uh borough that houses Willisden, where White Teeth is sent. So they're they're all like pew, pew, pew. so they're, again, yeah, like 
to to add to that theory, mm-hmm. like they were all probably like happening parallel to each other, right next to each yeah, other. Yeah, exactly. Don't it. Um, and 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 I think Sina, like the family of what's his name, Sina on Beauty. Don't they live? Oh, the Belvies live some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah. Because or no, sorry, the, yeah. the Kips family. The Kipses, yeah. Do yeah. they not live somewhere I think near so. there? I remember them mentioning Willis. Right? Them no, at didn't some we point. say Islington or something? <laughs> yeah, or something. Well, Islington's <laughs> like north, so oh yeah, north sorry. London, so okay. it's not it's not too far. But like generally, yeah. like she never seems to set her story south of the Thames. <laughs> yeah, or south. Of... <laughs> so she think, never goes like, that uh, far. She never goes that far. <laughs> Yeah, or or east she of nothing, like, nothing or east of e- Notting Hill, probably. Yeah, she's not. Yeah, I was gonna make an East Enders joke, but oh, I don't yeah. know. Was... <laughs> I don't know either. I'm not. I'm not yeah, sure. I was gonna like. Oh no, maybe um, it's not. We're not right. Yeah. This is a novel, like very broadly speaking, it's a novel that's about. Uh, I would say four people, even though like the four yes. people, the fourth person is not somebody who's ever really given that much of a perspective, like centric chapter. I mean, okay, so we've got Leah. Um, there's Felix. Uh, there's Natalie, also named Keisha. Keisha. And then there's Nathan. Nathan's mm-hmm. the one who I was saying doesn't really have a perspective chapter, but he yeah. he recurs throughout the narratives. Yeah. And I plays, I think, quite a big role, especially coming towards the ending. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Sorry, can I ask? Go. Did you watch the movie? I did not get to watch this. This uh, book was um, adapted into a television film uh, for the BBC, directed by Saul Div, mm-hmm. and it's it's not that easy to get. Um, oh, okay. It was like broadcast on BBC Two in November 2016, but I I tried looking for ways to stream it, and it's not easy to find. You can find on Vimeo. Like the trailer, the trailer, yeah, that's yeah. what. Okay, which you know, I we think it, when yeah. We, yeah, I showed it to you, and then I was like surprised. I was like, oh, I thought all of these scenes happened at like night for some reason, but then I also I remember that like six p.m. in England is still. Yeah, not what if this dark. whole time that whole trailer was yeah, set so, at like nine p.m. Pala, yeah, so I kinda, and we didn't. Even... <laughs> I kind of like remembered. I was like, oh yeah, oh well, yeah. well, now I know. I mean, days are longer, probably. Yeah, and most of it was like summer stuff. Like there was hardly any like that's winter. True. Mm-hmm. <laughs> winter scenes throughout NW. But anyway, it's about these four people and um, their relations to each other. Uh, but they're they're even saying the word relations is like it, it doesn't feel right because they're quite nebulous. They're living quite nebulous from each other, except for Leah and Natalie, who grew up as childhood friends. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, Felix, I think, is like not related to them at all, except. Except for for the what happens end. to him, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. While Nathan is also a childhood friend who kind of like sort of fell out, and then like he kind of mm-hmm. just like went through his own life, and then eventually they encounter him by chance in the neighborhood again because it's not right. it's not that big, yeah. Um, and again, like I I think sort of this to go back to the point that I was making at the start, like this is a novel where. It gives enough like attention to each of these characters. It tries to give us a good sense of what their lives feel like, what their worlds feel like. But it it it, is, it isn't at all like the way she did it for her characters in like White Teeth, where a lot of the ways that her, she exposed these characters to us, like now by comparison, feel I think a bit caricaturish, where she sort of yes. allowed for silly things to happen or absurd things to happen. Um, whereas here it's like, oh no, this is now just them being very cerebral and very reflective, uh, or very pensive. And there's not like much room for, for anyone to like, uh, uh, like sort of like poke Reflect. fun or poke fun at, at what's going oh, right. on or like, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, okay. Like what I mentioned before mm-hmm. in our last episode on beauty was like funny. Yeah. And like white teeth had some funny moments then yeah. that weren't meant to be funny in the like if you were experiencing the book you yeah. know if you were a character in the book but yeah. to us as readers it's like that's so funny um but then this oh, i don't know did you well no i was thinking this... i was thinking exactly of you saying that excuse me in the last episode 
when <laughs> like I started to feel like this book is feels very dry tone wise. <laughs> yeah, like, it is. I mean, like not that not that she wasn't like attempting humor or deliberately or uh, yeah, accidentally, absolutely. but like like you could see again like speaking to the idea that this feels like a very different book. Like the yeah. the you know she left very little room for us to like say oh that's funny like uh, that's a clever yeah. that's a clever thing that she does to like but. At least to in, lighten the mood even a yeah, bit. Yeah, but at, at least like in in those earlier books, you sort of see the hand of the author at work, kind mm-hmm. of like uh, constructing the scene to make the characters' world seem ridiculous. Whereas here, it's like she's not really like poking fun. A lot of it seems very serious and very dry. Yeah. Um. Which, to be fair, I mean, it covers a lot of serious shit. Yeah, no, truly, truly. Not to say that the others didn't, but then, like, you know, for her to focus on it yeah. there, tonally now. There was an interview I was reading of hers on Interview Magazine where she was saying that this book felt like the first book she really wrote as an adult. Or she felt like she felt like the first three books that she had written oh, really? were written like at a different part of her life or something apart from her. Mm-hmm. Um, and like to the point that like, I don't, I don't think she even can stand to read white teeth ever again though, which was like surprising. Wow. To me. Yeah. But like, like she really felt like she Shit. had like sort of grown into a more mature phase and now like sort of started that off with this book, um, which, right. you know, I think is makes sense because we've both read like swing time before and I and I would say that swing time style and the approach that she th- takes to telling that story is a little more aligned to how she's telling the story here in NW. And I think this reflects like a side of her that um, it's the more purified version of what she was trying to go for with her first three books, which is this sort of um, like she's very like intellectually rigorous. Yes, you know, like, like that, that's yeah. a, that's the thing I'd say about this book is like in the sense that the first books, especially White Teeth, were very sentimental. This one is like markedly less sentimental, and mm-hmm. it's really more trying to trace the thought patterns of the people who inhabit it. Yeah, uh, and not with an eye towards the- judgment, yeah. but just to say, like, well, this this is how this person is, you know. What else can they do? This is how they're led to think. Yeah. Parang, it's not trying to show you the experiences as a form of, like, to, to, to put something in the book. Do you know what I mean? Or, like, yeah, to, yeah. To, to further plot as it is to just be, like, explaining why this is happening yeah. to your character. Yeah. I, and I think... Yeah. I think as it... opposed to, like, in the other novels where it's so plot-heavy. Yes, yeah, yeah. And so... Like, okay, that's her thing also. Like, all the characters are connected as usual. Okay, like, yeah. That's her thing. Yeah. But then, like, this one is more of, like... um, They're connected because nga, of where they live, where they yeah. all, most of them grew up together. Yeah. And then it's, like, it just so happens that this is how different they ended up being. Yeah. I, I really feel like this book is all the more complicated because of that. And mm. it's it's the sort of thing that makes me feel like, in my gut, I feel like I like this book. But in my head, I'm still trying to work out why. <laughs> I Yeah. I, <laughs> I understand. Yeah. I think it being so different adds, well, for me, huh, adds to that possibility of you wanting to like it yeah like i think that's me right now maybe i'm kind of just like okay, okay. maybe yeah, I should yeah. Have. like okay just for people i kind of medjo read this twice okay ish but like i had such a difficult time going through it for any one reason or other and i'm yeah as you say it now like buying it's like oh maybe this whole like challenge of it is what makes it interesting and like yeah yeah Okay, maybe what we can let's. This is the part where we can start getting into sort of the plot or the discussion of what happens in this yeah. book to try to like, like evoke some examples and then try to like wrestle our way through, you know, our feelings towards this book. Um, yeah. Okay, so the book starts. Uh, it's a it's a five part book, and the first part is called Visitation, and it's about Leah. It's Leah centric, and um, the whole. I think, like, just like a quick 
way of summarizing what happens in this part of the book is that Leah tries to wrestle with this idea that everyone's sort of expecting her to get pregnant. Um, yes. But she very clearly does not want to. And like, yep. it's sort of revealed that when this woman comes to her house and like is begging for help, uh, she sort of just like blurts out like, oh, you know, I found out this morning that I'm pregnant. Uh, and like the stranger who comes into her house, her name is Shar. And who also turns out to be an old classmate from her school, like she's like, oh, you know, good for you. <laughs> like, like she doesn't yeah. like she doesn't really know anything uh, that much about like Leah's life to really like say anything consoling or like like truly like like befitting of a sincere encounter. But she just tries yeah. to be polite about it. Um, and eventually, like Leah sort of like pays it back in return by giving her some money. Uh, and when she tells the other people in her life like yeah i gave her money because she really seemed like she needed help like everyone starts getting yeah, mad at her everyone's like what's wrong with you yeah, like, like uh, there was such a clear scam like how could you be so yeah. naive like and it and it's coming from everyone like her mom who like it's sort of like implied like when she was like younger like her mom basically like did everything that she could do like make sure that she like lived a good life and survived mm-hmm. um to her husband who's like an immigrant and he's like sort of like trying to make a place for himself in london trying to settle but like even he's like how could you you know like this is so this like is, that's so reckless yeah such a reckless thing for you to do and like at the same time like she's like sort of suppressing this information about her pregnancy and she doesn't want anyone to know that she's really pregnant and this goes on to the point where she I mean, like, my understanding is that she terminates the pregnancy, no? Yes. Yeah. For me also, I I read that as how that yeah. ended Yeah, and then she also starts noticing around her neighborhood that uh, the scammer, Char, is, is just, like, hanging around there. It's there, yeah. like, literally, <laughs> and yeah. Because like, like encou- she lives there. Yeah, and they're, like, encounters. Is become, it, like, sorry, in- I can't remember. Is that how they re- she realizes that they were classmates before? Well, no, like, she realizes, like, from the get-go, Char is the one who, oh, like, notices, like, okay. hey, didn't you go to the school that I went to? Like, and yeah, who are the yeah. people you know? Who's right. our kabach? Like, she starts yeah. asking her these oh, questions. Yeah, yeah. And, like, that kind of also dooms Char also because then yeah then because Leah's then... also like well I know now who you are per- exactly yeah 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 <laughs> like I know perfectly I and remember. then when they see each other it's yeah. just like because also like it's so awkward we should mention that Leah has not moved away from the neighborhood where she grew up and in fact yes. the house that they inhabit is literally just the backyard of the council estate where she grew up she grew up yeah right um, yeah and yeah, and so, like, she keeps seeing Shara, and, and, like, you know, she doesn't, like, I mean, like, I think only once she tries to, like, pressure Shar into, like, kind of, like, paying her paying back. Paying her back. But then, yeah. like, otherwise, it's just Shar going up to her and saying, like, you know, I don't owe you anything! Like, <laughs> like, like okay. yeah, she's, like, It's so bad. Yeah, where it's sort of like, re- even. yeah, it's really like sort of like like irritating because now That's they can't still avoid each other. Thirty pounds, man. Yeah, thirty pounds, it's a lot. Man. That's a lot of money, right? But you know, but then That's also like you can't kids. you can't also like blame because like okay, maybe she really needed the money, but then we don't really know what she used it for. So it's one of those things yeah, where it's like yeah, yeah. it's very dubious because we never really yeah. see things from Shar's side, but but yeah. it, it's always like I don't know man implied. I would say it's a scam I, yeah yeah it's always because, like, like sort of she implied. kept saying naman talaga like I'll, I'll pay you back promise so why yeah, would you say that yeah. Yeah, and then afterwards we all like hey man I don't owe you anything because you were being a good Samaritan like that's yeah not, yeah just so it's like constantly hard. implied that like she's sort of in some shady business but we you mm-hmm. know we're never really given yeah a lens. it's also in this like part of the book that we meet Leah's best friend Natalie who, mm-hmm. unlike Leah, has like moved far away from the neighborhood where they grew up. Although it's still, it's but still, still in, in NW, NW right? right? Okay, so it's not yeah, that yeah. far. But let's like she's like from done what, know, what she can to like distance yeah. herself from. But does her family, like her, like siblings, do they still live in that area? I don't think they no? live in the council estate. I know oh, that okay. they've gotten like, their own she moved in. place. Yeah, she okay. moved in with with the older sister. But we learned that later. Um, yeah. What we at least learn about Natalie in that first part of the book is that um, she's a lawyer. She's married to a banker. 
uh mm-hmm. they're rich they live in like a mansion apparently and then like they yeah. have like three they have two like kids. They, they two kids sorry two kids and like life seems good for them um mm-hmm. much to like Leia's however wait yeah yeah we're not yet there <laughs> but but oh, like sort okay, of okay, but okay. like sort of much to Leia's this dismay na, oh okay you know like I kind of did not really I was not really like sort of active growing up and now I'm like sort of stuck in this dead end job where I am trying to work out distribute lottery money to like NGOs and I don't really yeah. want to know what I want to do with that I just know I don't want to be pregnant yeah, but everyone wants me to be pregnant Oh, I also forgot yeah. to mention that when this book does kick off with Leah, she's sort of in the midst of like working out like this thought process that is like centered around the phrase "I am the sole author." Sorry, of my I am sole uh, author of the life? dictionary that defines me. Of yeah. Yeah. Which, by the way, not how dictionaries work. <laughs> but <laughs> I'd like to no, say, but, but I mean, like, I think that's a very sort of telling, like, opening thought for this book because I do feel that this book is a lot about like the struggle how to define, define oneself. Yeah. Like yeah, okay, yeah. like even okay, like even with the title N W, like as much as it refers to the location, I think it's also telling that N W is also a direction. Right? Yeah. So, in a way, you know what I mean? It's Mata, one direction. Ma- Mata be really I say so myself. myself. But, like, but like it, this book is, in a lot of ways, about direction. Yeah. Right? About no, yeah, direction of, like, people. One's life, you know. Yeah. yeah. And, and who gets to decide. Especially because, yeah. like, in who the lives, West. Who dies. Yeah. Like, who in the dies. West, like, you sort of... There's that expectation that you are supposed to be sort of the self-autonomous being who decides for themselves like whatever they want their life to be they can be it as long as they like want it hard enough i mean like more true in america than in the uk but like in like in the uk it's sort of now like mingled as well with that those social expectations that you know they Mm -hmm. inherited from like earlier generations of social manners so um she's sort of like torn up by that and i think that that is sort of the uh, like the the way that she that Zadie is like sort of framing this whole novel it's like okay so this is a book that is probably about like sort of self-determination about figuring out who you are in spite of everyone else saying that you should be something else right yeah. and I think it it's great also na parang no one is like a child yeah character yeah like they're all really well as that's Quote right. Yeah. Well established adults, more or less. Yeah. And like, I were they in? Sorry, are they in their late thirties when this? It, novel? For me, I assumed it was like that. It seems like because that would make sense to why people are pressuring Leah then to have kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. There's that. Now, part of the reason I also wanted to litigate that sort of opening train of thought is that one thing I think this book does pretty well. Um, and not here I think we can segue into the next part of the book is that it starts introducing ideas that I think like um, resonate with things that happen in later parts of the book and I mean like especially with Leah it, it, with Leah and Natalie it's not that hard to connect them because they've grown up in similar environments and they know yes. each other so it's and not they... hard they know each other close, like yeah. compared to other. It's it's not hard yeah. to think that what one is thinking influences the other in some way. Mm-hmm. But then in the mm-hmm. second part, we meet somebody who's like completely not related at all to them in any way, or it's not like sort of revealed that they're related in any way. Uh, the second part is called Guest, and it's about Felix Cooper, who yeah. um, like he's this guy who, when we first meet him, the first thing we know about him is that he's in a relationship Reco- with this woman. Oh, okay. With Grace. Yes. Yeah, and he's a recovering addict. Um, and he sort of lived... He's gone through, like, this whole string of careers where, like, he's uh, worked in film. When we meet him uh, in his part of the book, he he's negotiating a car deal with some posh guy. Mm-hmm. And so he's, like, kind of, like... His life has been around like a whole bunch of directions. Um, yeah. But when his part of the book begins, like he makes his commitment, like, 
yeah, I want to commit to this relationship with my girlfriend, Grace. And so over the day that he goes through, he kind of like sets these wheels in motion that allow him to yes. commit to that choice. Yeah. So like part and of... then... Yeah, like we can like walk through his like itinerary. Um, <laughs> yeah. The first, his first... Day in the life. Yeah, day in the life. Literally, because this is one... Literally, it's, quite it's, literally it's his... Day, it's, it's a one day yeah. part. Uh, of the yeah. book. Uh, first thing he does, and I think that's cute because that's why I guess it's called guest. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, know. he's sort thought. of passing through. I I'm kind of like still trying to make sense of those like chapter the, the titles, the part titles. Yeah, because yeah, and especially are, because you, are you also thinking of later. visitation? Okay, <laughs> I yeah. <laughs> every time you read visitation, did you also think of I don't know the rosary? <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay, I will say like I was like trying to look while I was doing research for the context of this book. I did find mm-hmm. some like um, critical papers that were about uh, NW, and there was one that I read where somebody was trying to uh, impose compare it, yeah, to like the, the biblical, yeah, the bi- mysteries, yeah, yeah, like or like sort of like kind of like uh, contrast Leah with the Virgin Mary, yeah. Which okay, that's what I Loki was thinking, but I wouldn't write a whole paper on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah this I would did. think that is it visitation because. She did a thing, and then she's well, trying to. Well, get no, it's it's pregnant. yeah. I yeah. mean, like she's trying to not be pregnant. She's yeah, like the opposite, I mean, you know. It's, or it's I I mean, like I I assume that mainly that the visitation was Shar's visitation. That's what I thought also. And like sort of then, her presence being unable to leave. Yeah. <laughs> like she can't get out of <laughs> Leah's life now. <laughs> now, I know, now that she's uh, visited. <laughs> but anyway, know. like. With um, going back to Felix, Felix. Uh, so Felix sort of goes from place to place where he's sort of meeting different people in his life. The first person yeah. he visits is his dad, Lloyd, and yep. he brings him a book that recounts how they were previously residents of a historic communal squat known as Garvey House. And like the whole time, you get the sense of like, oh, okay, this is sort of where Felix came, he from. came from. Like you know, he yeah. was he was raised by literally by a whole community. It wasn't just yeah. Lloyd, and that's why there's a sort of a degree of estrangement between them where they can't. I mean, like you know, it's nice that he's visiting him, but he knows that he yeah. doesn't like fully like he's not fully eye to eye with his dad on all things. Uh, but yeah. he sort of just like kind of tolerates it. And, like, even yeah. when he, later on, like... Because his dad's pretty old, na, right? Yeah. And, like, later on, isn't it that when Felix talks to the neighbor of Lloyd, whom Lloyd has had, like, this long-standing disagreement with, like, it seems like Felix gets along better with the neighbor than with the dad. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So that's I agree. I there's that, that sense that... Um, after that, he goes to meet this guy named Tom, who's sort of this posh slimy dude who he, he's trying to like Tom is trying to sell a car to him and he's trying yeah. to like like up the price but like Felix knows that it's like a bad car deal and the whole time mm-hmm. like he knows that he can kind of like get Tom because like Tom is also like heavily distracted by his own girlfriend calling him up repeatedly and like complaining to him <laughs> <laughs> so like it's sort of like it's sort of like an easy way to work around it but but there's also the sense that like when Felix is talking to Tom like he's sort of speaking from experience I don't know if you felt that yeah yeah no, yeah yeah, yeah. I know yeah what you're where about. he's like trying to like use his experience to leverage to... the deal yes yeah yeah which is smart yeah I no, guess I, I, yeah yeah and, and I mean like it's one of those things that I think gives him confidence because yeah, if you think about it in the context of him being like a recovering addict and he's had all these like sort of different careers throughout his life, like it's yeah. and like now that he's like kind of like setting himself turning up to, around, yeah, turn around and make this commitment about his life, then you know that kind of like hard success makes him yeah. feel like yeah, you know Would maybe do, I, I can't yeah. do anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, man. This part makes me so sad. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna say because like. Like, the next part, the next visit he makes is he goes to visit his old, like, on-and-off girlfriend uh, named Annie. And, like... Yeah, because she's... And she's a jer... Is she also a druggie? Sort of. Or, like, it's... Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. They do, yeah. She does, She does like, take drugs when, like, when he visits her. But, like, it's sort of, like... She has this 
to describe Annie. She has a very complicated relationship with the place that she lives in, where yes, I, you know, I'm trying to still make sense of it. Like she kind of owns it, but she has no power but, over it. <laughs> yeah, I was confused because she, so she's not a landlady question mark. Yeah, or like she's the. Was she the daughter of the person of the who, who own who owns the place? I but, don't know who's. Yeah, to say. it was like very. Yeah, it was like a very you know convoluted like ownership situation. Yeah. But she's basically yeah. sort of like attached to that place. Um, yeah. And okay, here's the thing. My, my thing about this book again, like sort of to comment on it broadly, and maybe even to preempt like our evaluation. Even if I were to recommend this book, there's a part yeah. of me that, like, I I really think somehow that this scene where Felix talks to Annie is probably the best writing. Best scene? Yeah. Yeah. It's the best. Like, uh, there's so much to it that I think has so much complexity that yeah. reminds me so much of, like, Russian short stories or like right. you know like or yeah. like Dostoevsky where yeah 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 you know like we're, we've been on Felix's side the whole time and like Felix yeah. comes to Annie and he's telling her like look this is what I want to do with my life maybe you should get yeah. your life in order too because it looks like a fucking mess and, yeah. and then Annie kind of like comes back to him with like she, yeah she collapses back yeah with the, like the most startling defense ever <laughs> where, yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Where she's like, you know, like, wait, like, help me remember the the whole point of oh her argument is like she's basically saying like, you know, you don't have to feel entitled to fix my life, or you don't feel like you're here on earth to fix my life. Y- y- yes, like that's one so part I think of it, so, right? That's that's how I understood it also. But the, Be- yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, say it, say it. Go. I no, mean, I I don't think I should. <laughs> <laughs> there's a there's a part of it that's also her kind of like sort of realizing that her situation, her whole life situation is fraught. So it's not like she can improve it anyway. And like sort of to illustrate her point, yeah. Across the street, there's like this happy family that she keeps sort of jeering. That's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Which also is some of the most like. British things. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> like, but in like, a scene. But like she sort of feels like it's okay for her to like mock the happy family because it's yeah. not something that's aspirational for her. Like she's yes. like sort of broken out of the system of life enough that she can see that she, that her life doesn't have to end in what's going on across the street. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which and she's like clearly fine with it. Yeah. Yeah, which like Felix... like it's not her being sad about like it's not her being like, um, like like parang as opposed to Leah who has all these expectations that she's trying yeah, to live yeah. up to, but then in a sense also like s- steer away from. See, Annie mismo is just like no, I got this. Yeah, which is like I think a good contrast point between Leah and Annie because like Leah and Annie are similar yeah. in the fact that they. Basically, they've live. never spoken, but <laughs> they they are good. Yeah, they, go sorry. But they, they basically, they basically live. live where they're rooted to. You know, like they haven't yeah. left. Yes. where the part that, that sort of like kind of, of gave town. them the yeah the the place mm-hmm. their place in the world, and yeah. even though that place in the world has also given them something to aspire to, like Leah has seen it in one way, and like Annie has seen it the completely different way, which is that Annie yeah. has the autonomy now to say like. I don't have to want that. I don't have to want the yeah. life that others want for me, it, which she, yes. which is basically her argument against Felix. Against Felix, yeah. Whereas Leah's like, oh, but maybe I should, but, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to. Like, I love. She's so conflicted. Yeah, like with... like Leah loves her husband so much. Yeah, yeah. But she doesn't want to give in to this one thing that he really yeah, wants. Yeah, that he really like, and it's clear that that's on the only thing he's ever like. Parang you know, it's like the only thing he's ever asked of her. Yeah, like. which is why like also which the... I know it's a lot. Okay, right. honestly, no, like rearing a child absolutely. is a lot. Yeah, so get someone, but then like also it's like oh yeah, I don't know, do do. Like it's fair for I'm mean, sorry not to preempt the end, but mm. you know like parang when he kind of questions her actions and he's basically asking it like parang he's like thinking does she really love me like that's yeah. fair to assume yeah I, compared to like Annie being like uh okay you can leave but don't expect me to like change anything about this because 
Like, I'm pretty solid na. I wonder what that suggests about, like, sort of the quality of the relationships that the two women have with their respective right. like, people in their life. Because, Signif- like, yeah. at least with, That's like, true. Annie, like, she's open enough to, like, be honest with Felix that, hey, like, I can call yeah. you out on this. That's true. Even Where- though she knows she's the mistress. Right. Whereas, True. like, with, that pa. with Leah, yeah. like, she, because she can't bring herself to say, hey, I don't really want kids, or, like, she always has that excuse, like, I just need the timing to be right. She can't bring herself to be open about, like, the abortion that she has, or the yeah. the the fact that she takes, like, birth control pills later on. Like, she yeah. hides that as a secret, and that's something that, um, that her husband, Michelle, discovers and is, like, very distraught about. But it's yep. like, yeah, you don't know your wife, dude. Yeah, but also, like, she doesn't maybe also want to know enough about the husband. Yeah. In that sense. And I think, yun, yeah, again, with Annie, she can be she can be this honest because siguro she knows Felix that well then. Right, yeah. To wanna, to be all like, well, I can say this to him. Yeah, like, which, like, again, uh, again, like, really speaks to how well the scene is written. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, Agreed. Like, I think you could, like, isolate this bit yeah. and it would be quite good. Yeah, because to, to, to lay people. it with all those layers of subtext of how yeah. well they know each other, that she's yes. willing to be, like, that honest. Like, talk shit. And even, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, oh, you're not talking talk shit, but like, okay, to be fair in to yeah. Felix, sino ba siya to be all like, hey, maybe you should turn your life around just because he suddenly, I don't know, I get her point is what I'm saying. Yeah, but no, like, absolutely, um, absolutely. Parang, parang, I guess it also, it's the same for Felix. Like, he thinks that he can recommend these things to her yeah. because of Siguro what they've been yeah, through prior. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right, true, that's true. yeah. And I, and I guess yeah. that, that speaks something to their relationship before that maybe he was in a position where he kept telling her how to live her life. Right. And she never Probably, really, yeah. And she probably never really spoke against any of that. It un- until that moment. Until that moment. Which yeah. is like... Yeah. Which, it, you know... Sigurd so is her being like, oh, well, you're leaving now, so... Uh, yeah. fuck I might as well do it now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so like, I, uh, I hate I every time you, you say this to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that scene's great. That's an amazing scene. Uh, absolutely. And like, you know, he... <laughs> yeah, yeah, like he sort of falters after that, like, all right, I guess... Life's not gonna be as great as I hoped it would be. <laughs> the future, man. You know, I, I, I you know, he, yeah. Like it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I guess I have to keep thinking about the future. Like, uh, mm-hmm. you know, he, he feels like retain he, my confidence. Yeah, in retain it. my confidence in it, and like where the direction's going is fine. Yeah. And he's on the way home when um, he, he's uh, on the tube, uh, yep. and he basically stands up subway. for this elderly woman who tries to get the seat on the tube um, yeah. but like in the process he ends up sort of bothering these two guys who don't want to get up for this old elderly the woman. lady yeah. yeah and so um, he sort of like tries to make the move they get mad at him and then like he you know like eventually they do but like when Felix gets off the train they follow him yeah. and like he's yeah. on his way back to his house when the two men like come up to him and then they stab him to death, yeah. uh, which which was something that was foreshadowed at the end of the first part because like at the carnival they see a news report about That's somebody right. having been killed. That's right. Yeah. And and I have to say, like at this point, I kind of was like already getting a sense that because they don't. It's gonna be him. Yeah, they don't name. They don't name obviously who the 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 two people are who follow the two men who follow Felix. Yes. Are. But there is that. Um, sort of throw away detail that one of the men has a scar on his cheek and in mm-hmm. part one when Leah uh, bumps into her old schoolmate Nathan uh, one of the things that she notices yeah, is that she he has says a deep is that he has scar a... on his cheek so I was like yeah. oh okay that's a, oh. <laughs> this important detail well, here <laughs> uh, we go he, uh, like here it's now back here to my go. hunch basically yeah like that's actually like <laughs> Maybe we should note the scar on yeah. his cheek. Yeah. So we'll know who he was. Yeah, we'll know who the killer was. Yeah, um, right. So uh, Felix dies. And, yeah, and so that's he's it. dead. That's it, he's that's dead. That's very he's, sad. He's gone. And we go yep. into part three, which is entitled Host. And it's the longest part of the book uh, mm-hmm. because it is about Natalie's life. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Natalie, as we said earlier, is the best friend of Leah, who now lives in a mansion. But how did she get that way? Why don't we find out here in Leah <laughs> Origins First Class? Shut <laughs> up! I literally Origins. No, it's Leah Colin Origins Colin Dash First Class. Yeah, or what's the name? Sorry, what's the name of their estate? Because it's that. Uh, I it's always that forget. First class. It's that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the instead it's, of there it being Brighton? a savior mansion. It's it, Bri- is it Brighton? It Bri- Bridewell. <laughs> it starts with a B. Something like that. Caldwell. Caldwell Did is I like that up? Caldwell. I think is the name of their estate. I start may, oh, the BR might have been okay. the name of the school, but yeah, let's go with Caldwell First Class, where we sort of <laughs> see Natalie and Leah like grow up together. Yeah, you know, and um, the whole idea is that um, Natalie is somebody who's like very she's like very scientific growing up. She's very anthropological, mm-hmm. so she like like tries to observe the world around her and she's like trying to think deeply but in the way that is appropriate to sort of children where you know like when whenever their certain kids are like um confronted with like like higher philosophy they're sort of like struck by it and they're overwhelmed by mm-hmm. it and they can't really like think beyond like a certain point with it but she's yeah. still like never let the less is like trying to grow up and trying to like observe what is happening to her and especially to Leah like like I, I was like really struck by the parts where she's sort of like trying to figure out what's Leah's personality actually like and then yeah. like she becomes like self-reflexive like wait what's my personality like like do I yeah. even have a personality does my personality change like yeah. uh, who, am I the same person who I was like five Before. years ago or will I even be the same person five years later and she sort of can't yeah. get past that question but it's sort of the preoccupation in her head. And as far mm-hmm. as I know, this is also like sort of the inception also of the book. These are the ideas that that Zadie Smith was very much interested in as she was writing this book, figuring out like, yeah. you know, like what, what, how does one like quantify the change in a person? Because that's yeah. like, that seems like the least tangible thing that anyone yeah. can like mark or, or like distinguish yeah. at all. But that's very yeah. much something that Natalie, who as a child is uh, actually named Keisha, uh, she's sort of preoccupied with. Mm-hmm. And like she goes through like sort of the motions uh, of growing up, like Leah gifts her with a vibrator or was it a dildo? I think it was a vibrator. I yeah. think so. Yeah. And when that happened, I literally was like, all right, <laughs> let's go friendship. <laughs> Good yeah. for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, her mom finds out about it and then there's like a period yeah. where like she's not allowed yeah. to like see Leah for a year <laughs> see Leah yeah 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 <laughs> and then Sobrang. and then like sort of, sorry they yeah. were like teenagers right yeah 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 yeah. yeah and yeah. then and then this was like around the time also because like Keisha has like an older sister who's like pregnant and dropped out of mm-hmm. school so mm-hmm. like she, like it's very who much eventually has mind. a really big family yeah and she also ends up taking care of the mom so yeah. it's one of those things where like yeah like Keisha is very much kind of like doing this all on her own and like very curious about the world but like not yeah. sort of like exercising her power to like I guess like not not that she realizes that she has any but like to like mm. change the things uh, that, that are happening that around are happening her? to her or around yeah. her yeah so yeah. like that, to not define it by who she's taking care of yeah or, or even not not defining it by defiance of the rules that are put oh, in place. Right. Like, like that year that, yes. that she's not allowed to see Leah. Like there's never a point where she's like, okay, maybe I guess I can break this rule once. Like they just eventually yeah, yeah. meet up again That's after true. the year. No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she follows it very thoroughly. You're yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's, it's one of those things where, yeah, she kind of just like follows the rules. And yeah. I guess like the sort of benefits her as she's growing up because she does end up getting like... Like, okay, yeah, even to the point that she gets a boyfriend who yes. is sort of appointed by her mom. Mom? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. they were they arranged yeah. Joahan. <laughs> like, not even arranged marriage, just the Joahan. Yeah. And so, well, because her mom's an immigrant, right? Yeah, her mom's an immigrant, and she's like a, she's a very big church goer. So she picks a yeah. boy from church, and she's just there like, There you go. Yeah, you can just see him. You both like to read, right? 
Yeah. <laughs> He was like reading, he right? Reading. If he you were to have reading. a boyfriend, might as well might be as a this guy with. from church. Yeah, someone you can read with who's also from church. I yeah. think that should be a yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah those are the mom's two standards. The, yeah, um, but like you know, like and she carries on that relationship as she enters college. But like mm-hmm. as she also discovers, like she's not really a good fit with that boy at all. Um, yeah, and I think we can just like sort of breeze through the college part because what happens in college is that. She meets her future husband, Frank, who's like this very rich, mixed race, half Italian, half. Yeah. Uh, I'm not. I black? Forget. Is he yeah. black? Yes. He's also half. He's also black. Um, right. And and he sort of has like compared to Na- Natalie, at least she would think a weak personality. Like because so yes. like the way the book sort of explains it is that because he's from a, such a prosperous privileged. and privileged background, like, yeah. he has never really had to make decisions for himself. Like, things just sort of happen yeah. for him. You know, yeah. like, he's never had to worry about things. And mm-hmm. so, like, it, it's to the point that, like, she sort of feels like, oh, okay, he won't really, like, notice that there is also, like, th- these, like, small internal decisions I have to make for myself every day. Yes, and I, maybe I can be fine with that. Um, but yeah. she sort of like fall. She falls in love with him, uh, yep. and it, they get married. They get married, and then she sort of beco- she becomes like a lawyer. Uh, but as she's becoming a lawyer, it's also this is the important part. I think is that she um, she sort of realizing that to become involved in that kind of system, she has to make certain concessions uh, that she can't decide for herself. Yes, which uh, and they're mostly like mediated by like sexism, internalized system mm-hmm. systemic sexism, and yep, she yep, meets yep. like an older lawyer later who like tells her, yeah, the <laughs> the racism and racism, is, right? the racism yeah. is systemic, but you just have to do it so you, that you can become yeah. a queen's consort lawyer like me, <laughs> yeah, like literally like me, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and it's as she's sort of going through uh, like this process of becoming a lawyer that. I wouldn't say she becomes disillusioned, but she just becomes more curious. She, Jay did? Oh, okay. Well, or sort of she like, mm. like because I think this is where her curiosity curious about like making yeah yeah in, okay, in like illicit sex to... comes in. Yeah, yeah, I think that's where it comes yeah, yeah, in. Yeah. Is like sort of realizing right. well, okay, if people like sort of accept that as a, as a valid system, you know, like yeah. what's to stop that from like happening happening in a non professional setting? Yeah, and even like later, yeah, like jumping ahead a little bit, like when she eventually starts like, like visiting this um sex site Couple. where yeah, like where she can meet like, um yeah, couples swingers. or swingers. This is the truth. Yeah, sometimes. yeah, swing- <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, like, do, do you think like people like when they heard like oh the next movie's called the next book's called What's, Swing Time? All swing right, Swing Time. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Oof. Okay. No, but like like um. It, it's to the point that when she gets to that website, the first thing that sort of notice is that most people are like giving excuses, like "Oh, I'm only here for work." <laughs> like, yeah, I only really yeah. have this for work. Like, <laughs> like, excuse yeah, me? like, dude, who's doing this for work? Yeah, um, what's your work? I want to know. But I think that sort of obedience to the system and mm-hmm. how it sort of rewards Keisha slash Natalie for obeying that system. Yeah. Again, is something that is hearkening back to the first two parts of the book, and there yeah. was a there was a point in this part of the book that I really stopped because I felt like there was like this line that was being given, and I was like, "This is the line that I think defines the whole conflict of the book," and it mm-hmm. comes from there's there's a part where they're giving a lecture. I think the part is called Montaigne. Okay. I we we haven't mentioned yet that this whole part part three host is told in, like, vignettes, numbered vignettes. Yes. Which is, like, 1 to 180. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah. this part. Of and, then, yeah. and then there's somewhere in the middle, There's a one of them is called Montaigne, and then the professor is telling them, I'm going to read the quote, I think his point is not that you, the lawyers, are reasonable and they, the people, are unreasonable, or even that the laws the people submit to are unreasonable but that those who submit to traditional laws have at least the defense of simplicity, obedience, and example. Can you see that under the third page? While those who try to change them, that is, the laws, 
are usually terrible in some way, monstrous. We see ourselves as perfect exceptions. And I was like, that's literally yeah. Leah <laughs> trying to justify yeah. her. You know, her like her actions. her wishes about not wanting to become pregnant, wanting a baby, despite everyone yeah. saying like traditionally at this point in time, you should yeah, start, you should you know, have a family. You know, like that sort of thing. Yeah. And you're getting old. And even going back to Felix, like his, I I don't know, like him sort of like kind of working against the system to be like, yeah, you know, the system ended up turning me out one way. But I don't have to be defined. But, I might be stretching this, yeah. but I don't have to be defined by by the flaws that I suffered in my in the earlier part of my life forever. I can actually change yeah. my life. I can take yeah. control of my life. I can probably reform my life, you know. And I, and yeah. maybe if God willing, I can reform some others too, right? Yeah. And and and, 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 and he's like, who are you fucking? Yeah. Talking? Especially that, like when he tries yeah. to like dictate Annie's life to her. Yeah. She's the one who sort of sees him as terrible in some way or monstrous. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, like for me, I was like, this might be like what the whole book's about. Like, I, I think yeah. this is sort of the thing. Um, and of course, it naturally applies as well to to Natalie, where um, she's sort of seeing that firsthand, like uh, being told by her profession, uh, okay, you have to follow the the coded laws. Like, sorry, it's not really sorry, not the code, the the unspoken laws that have right. just been baked into the system that we now belong yeah. to and it's like you too can't escape it. it's too big for you to change it's way mm-hmm. too big for you to reform so don't even try don't even think of reforming yeah. them because it's not your thing yeah it's way bigger than you and the only thing you can really do is to submit to it yeah and she does like and to like like this sort of detrimental degree like she uh does become a lawyer at first like she starts uh working for this law firm which is not really like I, I mean, like, I don't think the law firm that she was in at first was, like, particularly good. But she mm-hmm. manages to, like, succeed past them. And then she starts doing, like, pro bono work for, like, I think migrant cases, no? Yes. And then, you know, like, sort of eventually, like, her practice is, like, well enough that she's able to get her own apartment in the city that she can stay in um, if, like, she's working late. But that also becomes, mm-hmm. like, sort of the perfect, like, I guess, like, alibi for her to carry out, like, the illicit relationships that she is able to... Yeah. Yeah, check into She got a very lucky... I mean, she got a very... She got very lucky with her in. You know what I mean? Yeah, to, yeah. And again, it speaks yeah. very much to her husband's sort of, like, leniency. Like, he's like, mm-hmm. oh, you need a new apartment? Yeah, that's fine. We can... You can totally... Yeah. You know? And, like... Yeah. It, and at the same time, it's <laughs> like... like exacerbated by her like kind of encountering her family and her family sort of berating her for being like you know nobody's asking you to come back to us like if you wanted to help the family you just help the family you wouldn't like try to look act all guilty around us (laughs) yeah 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 and she's like because amongst her siblings she's the most successful right yeah she's the most successful but she's also the one who's like most removed from them so as we said no that that Cheryl is like I mean she changed her name and everything yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It, it, to like and, a white name, I, and, and I even, may say so. And I would say even like that act of like changing the name, like it sort of like goes by quickly. The only like reference that's really made to it, or the time, the only time the narrative points that out is like when Leah is introducing her to some friends, and then she's like, "Oh, this is my childhood friend Keisha," but then she's like, "No, no, no, call me Natalie," and I'm like, "Okay, uh, yeah." <laughs> but like, and it doesn't like, "Oh, uh, it doesn't really dwell on that decision." Like, why does she pick Natalie? But it, yeah, I think yeah. you're right that it is just because like the name sounds like significantly it's, more white. White, yeah, yeah, and so that helps her to blend in, I guess, to that system more. Um, yeah, so she basically has her family with Frank. Uh, she starts. Uh, getting into these sexual encounters with swingers and like at mm-hmm, first like mm-hmm. she's she really like you know kudos to this part of the book like it plays that part out yes right like, yeah compared to almost everything else that's happened so far yeah this like, is the most like illustrated like it so gives her the time to first be like you know I don't really want to be on the side she like puts an ad and then she like immediately retracts it and then she yeah. puts an ad again and then she's yeah. like, oh, should I do it? I don't know. And I this don't was know. like 2011, 2012. Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, like, where's the internet? This is like this the starting. Time? This is like the start. I think of apps for this. I mean, like right. for apps, period. But then, like, I'm sure dating sites have always existed. Yeah, because in if you remember in the trailer for the BBC series, it yeah, comes out there as was a pop a, out ad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah. It's not which, even like okay. a side that she visits. It's literally like, yeah. it uh, was, do you her, want Mr. a virus? FBI, her, her, her MI6 man, because I'm going to assume they yeah. don't, it's not uh, an FBI oops, man. Her MI6 man was like, all right, you need help. Let's just, here, so take like, it. Uh, maybe I'll give you a little nudge that you can turn yeah, into just, a push. Just go, just go. We won't, <laughs> yeah. you know, we'll yeah. note it, but we won't like judge you for it. But yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So that that's what I found interesting. Also, in a barring, it's like, oh, okay, this is like, twenty twelve and twenty eleven, twenty twelve. Let's assume twenty ten at the earliest yeah. in like Zadie's mind, right, right. And so at this point, the internet is well. I don't know. I was on Tumblr at the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was in high school. But then, like you know, I think that's also when the internet started getting more. Um, like when it was also to have it in your phones now, I guess. Yeah, yeah. From there on, like instead of just having like your desktop or your laptop. I swear. I and think, I think I that like... adds to the accessibility of it. And especially knowing that, you know, she's in a rich community in right. London. I yeah. want to say that I don't Doesn't she also have... oh, wait, no, never think mind. I ever got ago. like a smartphone until like 2013. Exactly. Same. Yeah. So yeah I think that... me 2015 even. Yeah. Yeah. That's not true. 2014 to go right. as a grad gift. But even then, like, I was already on Twitter and stuff. So I yeah. feel like even... But at the time, Twitter was also still yeah, so still, different. Yeah, still, like, de- <laughs> developing yeah, like, into what it is now. You couldn't post t- pictures uh, at that <laughs> time. Literally, when this book came out, you could not tweet a picture of the book you were reading. You know or, what I mean? Like, or, if you had this book. I think... Or even tweet was Sadie, 2012 I think. also, like, when cancel culture was beginning? Because that wasn't that the year that they had that Joseph Coney thing... The one that oh Jesus! You remember that? Like uh, suddenly yeah. everyone wanted. Did we to... not bring this up recently with I don't me? Remember. Also, was it did. you? Oh no. Okay, but yes, yes. I, I. But that's like yeah, the, no. Like, that's like literally the hard inception of cancel culture. Of the, yeah, as a whole. that's true. Like, where everyone know. was like, "Wow, we got globally like, scammed." Yeah, yeah that now, was weird. We're now all gonna gather together to like find yeah. this one guy. I think this is the we one should thing we can control in our lives. <laughs> It's like it's as if someone made a joke like, "How do we cancel this order?" Yeah. And somebody was just like, "I don't know. Maybe we should just cancel the man." And yeah. From then on, I mean, to be fair, no, I'm not gonna get into that right now. But yeah, no. So yeah, that's how early on the internet was, and I guess also Sigur that adds to how it was Sigur. Like I said, Sigur twice. Sorry, it was like easy for. Natalie yeah, Keisha to go around because like there's no way that her husband. Probably, yeah, yeah, you know, and there's like no yeah. system for accountability. It's like it's, yeah, it's very exactly. much the wild west on the internet where like you yeah, know what exactly. you say, you don't know how it's gonna affect you. Later exactly, on. and just what you say also around this period. Um, but then I, I think also that that's how and again jumping super ahead, but like. It the time super adds to how she ends up getting caught, I guess. Yeah, no, yeah, like she sort of gets lax about it, where she's just yeah, sort of leaving exactly. her laptop open, exactly, and like leaving it open with the tabs open. Which like, is so come on, dude. dumb, <laughs> like, like lady, especially if like I don't know. I'm gonna assume like this is a time when like Siguro like families. It's not Uso yet to have one each. So what yeah. if, like, he was like, I'm going to borrow it because yeah. uh, I know I can. Well, yeah, and not then just, it, oh. Because, like, I mean, okay, well, I mean, like, they're a lot more well-off than Sinalia. But then, like, that's the thing, though, with, that happens with Leah and Michelle. <laughs> Leah and Michelle. But, like, how? <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> no, but, <laughs> but, you know, okay. like, you know how they only have one computer and, like, yes. Michelle has to finish, like, looking through his stocks. For the day yeah. before Leah yeah, can yeah, use yeah. It for the computer, I'm sure exactly. like I'm sure like Frank wouldn't mind like buying an extra computer, but exactly. I, I mean like they can buy an extra. But I mean like but... it, it might be just one of those things. Like like I'm suspecting that when that happens and she sort of becomes lax enough to like leave it open on her computer, she's desensitized already. That's from, true. Like, yes. Yeah. Grow, just like from the being so like entrenched yeah. in that state of mind already yeah, where yeah, yeah. she's okay. like not sure anymore what can she do to really like mm-hmm. affect any change in her life you know like mm-hmm. there are these like 
deep philosophical bits where it's talking about like uh, what an instant is or how long an instant is or the yeah. end of history. Yeah. And I mean, like all those things, whether you fully understand what they mean or not, like they sort of imply this inability to change anything, including yourself, like the end of history, like the way sort of that she describes it in the book is that the present moment is always the end of history because everything has already happened before it. That's true. And, you know, when you're always living in the present, uh, you know, you're never you're never really kind of enacting things because once a thing is enacted, it becomes part of the past. It becomes the part past, of history. Yeah. So she's mm-hmm. sort of like caught in that loop, that sort of mental loop. Now, okay, so maybe there are not really any consequences then if I do this yeah. or if I do yeah. that. Uh, but as we've already sort of alluded to, there is a consequence, yeah. which is that yeah. her husband Frank discovers that she's involved in a swinger site and he gets really mm-hmm. mad at her and that mm-hmm. kind of just like swings over to the next part of the book yeah uh, which is called crossing i oh, sorry and i just want to add to that okay. like and also what i said earlier about like how zadie's thing is like with characters who are all interconnected and who are all part of like the same community um oh i lost it god damn it Ah, yeah, like, parang, okay, in terms of consequences, yun nga, she, I guess she doesn't realize it, na parang, everything will always circle back, or, like, everything will yeah. happen for a reason, yeah. and the consequences will end up there, because, sorry, and, and not to preempt this next part that you're gonna go through, but, like, or, like, even ones that we've mentioned already, but yun nga, they meet Nathan early on, earlier on again, oh, sorry, is it Nathan? His name's Nathan, right? Yeah, yeah. Nathan, yeah. And, and yun nga, the whole thing with the scar, and then Felix, you know. And then after that, much later, you know, when that sort of revelation between Natalie and Leah happens about something, yeah. they, you know, it's again circling, it's gonna circle back later also yeah, once we yeah. go through this plot. Yeah. But then yun nga, like parang, I think that's a great section also of her being like, I mean, like when she eventually gets so lax. That adds to her privilege also, I think. Yeah. Na parang, yun nga, like she. If if she at one point had complained that that her husband is so lax about his life that he doesn't you know yeah whatever she doesn't realize that eventually she kind of became a Rin. yeah okay I I'm so glad you mentioned that because that is I think that's a part of the of the book that I, I might have glossed over in this part of the summary but like th- there's this whole like aspect of it that is her social mobility like her upward mobility oh yes and yeah. kind of her like moving out of being mm-hmm. I'd say. I, I don't really know the class system that well in Britain, but like working class to middle class, essentially. Yeah. You know, through her marriage to someone who is essentially yeah. upper class, right? Yeah. And exactly. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's perfectly correct what you're saying, that as she's being absorbed into that higher class, mm-hmm. she starts absorbing the flaws that someone like Frank has. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's also like. It adds to her whole backstory of never having making decisions for herself. I sorry, uh, yeah, never really making decisions that would benefit herself in terms like intimately or like in yeah, terms of yeah. uh, like her inner like as we would say in school, you know, like her inner life. self or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. It yeah, it's not it's not so much that she you know. Like, it's like the time that she finally is like, okay, I'm going to make a decision for me and do something different and stray from whatever. It's not a good decision, but she doesn't necessarily know that either. Yeah. Because, yun yeah, she's never had the that opportunity. Right, to, right. Yeah. Yeah, or like somebody to like kind of like, like right. shake her out of it in the way that yeah, Annie true. tries to shake Felix out of what yeah. he's... Yeah, what, and like, okay... That's true. And like going back to that again, it's like that's so sad. No parang the most honest people here yeah, or like the most life. Okay, this book is the, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. And by me too, I'm like, oh shit. Okay, so I guess we like this <laughs> yeah, book. Shit. But like the most the most honest characters there are are literally the only two passing characters. <laughs> yeah. Whereas literally the the actual married couples don't really know each other and can't talk to each other yeah, and man. literally don't. 
shit. That's so depressing. And, oh, and, man. And, and, like, and, and, and I think that's the one thing that transcends class in this whole thing. Right. Is like your, I guess what you were talking about, Kanina, din, is like that sense of direction and identity yeah, yeah. that transcends. Like you will be lost if because, you don't have. Yeah. yeah go and, ahead. And like, because like, that's exactly what Felix is sort of like caught in now is he believes that right. he's on the road to upward mobility as well. Like, that's he's right. Like, you know, I was in a film career before. That was yeah. I was actually pretty well off then. Maybe I can do it again now. Do like, it again. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. What you know? What's wrong with trying again? And mm-hmm. and that's again exactly what Annie is like cautioning him against. Like no. <laughs> you, like, yeah. Like dude, literally. Like, I I know you like grew up in like not so great not ideal circumstances, but that doesn't mean that if you get there, your problems will automatically be resolved. This and, is weird. Yeah, that's very true. And that's a great. And that's. Sorry. Yeah. To get you. No, that then that's what exactly what happens to Natalie. Yes. Like, she was able to like move past it and she can afford all these things. She can afford yeah, another apartment. She can yeah. afford to support her siblings. And her but kids. she's so depressed. And and her own kids. And her own kids, yeah. But she has no sense of self. Yeah. Which is why and no real like true relationship to anyone else, and that's why what we've just said Shit. now is like a great segue to part four because oh, that's, that's when very, yeah. Natalie bumps into Nathan again. Mm-hmm, like she's mm-hmm. sort of upset that her husband, like that Frank, has like discovered her involvement in the site, Secret. so she kind of just like mm-hmm. wanders around, and then she encounters Nathan, and it's like, oh, okay, Nathan, mm-hmm. yeah, oh, Nathan, remember Nathan, and and it's and yeah. the, the the thing is like she like we immediately get the timing of when this encounter takes place because she goes to the road she wanders near the road where if you've been paying attention yeah Felix Felix. had been killed and the police are already there and they're like oh sorry ma'am you cannot go here because there's been an incident we won't say what it is because it's ambiguous Um, but then and in the trailer it's the last shot (laughs) and again it's daytime (laughs) but that's where she sees Nathan and Nathan's like hey maybe we should uh, just like walk away from this place no reason (laughs) yeah like this is so weird Uh, maybe we should follow the like can you imagine that he's literally the sketchy person that's like maybe we should listen to the police (laughs) yeah 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 so so they go like sort of go walking around and you know she's she's back basically in her old neighborhood and she's like very nostalgic about it like oh, i remember when you were this and remember when you were like that mm-hmm. remember mm-hmm. when you, yeah, he was a football player yeah, he was right a football player and he was like had he a was like a star ahead of him yeah like, remember when you were like he could have been coached by ted lasso and yeah not <laughs> yeah man. he may <laughs> by the way guys if you have not gotten on ted lasso <laughs> one million percent <laughs> watch it now I, this is like, our recommended <laughs> re- this is our no, required <laughs> It's a required, watch yeah. Watch Ted Lasso, holy crap. Go watch okay. Ted Lasso, it's so available good. on Apple it's, TV. It's the one mm-hmm. thing that makes Apple TV worth it. Maybe. That's I very true. Know, I will agree. I, I, would argue I will agree. I, I haven't seen the I other know. things, though, but I... I you don't like, have to. I'm so glad. You don't have to. <laughs> anyway, so... <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And, like, she has all these, like, nostalgic feelings about the way things were. And Nathan's just like, mm-hmm. man, like, stop saying that like it's not gonna do anything yeah. for anyone if you keep yeah, being nostalgic yeah. and he just like yeah he's now the person who off. calls her all, out on it like you yeah. know like my whole life which is, is valid okay so yeah gonna... like he, the, the, this is like the most we also get out of nathan's perspective of his credit like mm-hmm. he mm-hmm. like basically tells her like look i don't know what it is you want in your life right now it, it may be mm-hmm. like too highfalutin for me to like really understand but mm-hmm. you have to understand that what with what I'm going through, what I have to want in my life is survival. And I have to survive from day to day to day to day to day. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, if you feel like your life is any much like, Retrospectively, this is so defensive. Yeah, that's true. Sorry, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. that's fair. Okay. That's fair. But like, he sort of like, like kind of calls her out on like her thinking yeah. that her life is hard and that things have gone mm-hmm. astray mm-hmm. when his mm-hmm. is like literally that a stagnant um, yeah and he like to the point of survival and he and he mm-hmm. like basically makes the point like you know the people who you've thought have been shady this whole time like at, at least addressing the reader like me or i guess the guy who killed felix or even felix mm-hmm. himself at some point in his life or annie mm-hmm. or uh or char char you know all of us are just thinking about how we can survive yeah, yeah. Uh, that's we're not, true. we're not like reaching towards some lofty ambition. We're just like trying to find mm-hmm. a way to live because 
this is now the system that we've been born into. Yeah, and, exactly. And we have literally no power to change it. So the best we can do yeah. is to survive. Yeah. And she, yun nga, going back to what we were saying earlier, na parang, she doesn't understand that at first because yeah. she's like, she was really able to just crush it. Yeah. Like, you know, like be super successful for so long. Like, okay, not to say that it wasn't a problem. Sigurd, she did. And, you know, she had those problems with sexism and then racism. But then other than that, she still has money. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, compared to... She still lives in a nice house. Yeah. She has an extra apartment where she can fuck whoever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and, and, so yeah, it's like, a valid call out for right. him to make. But, like, that kind of distance also kind of overwhelms her. Like, she's just, like... She doesn't know how to yeah. process it. And she kind of just, like, walks yes. away from him. And, yeah. and he tries to get her to stop. And then yeah. eventually, like, she finds her way to a bridge. And she looks yeah. like she's about to oh, jump. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, but, yeah, yeah. But then the thing is, like, it's sort of vague why she decides not to jump. Doesn't Nathan talk her out of it in some the, way or other? I don't know if he talks her out of it. Because it he, he tells her, like, he kind of says something to try to make her stop. But I yeah. feel like she goes through a whole thought process also on her own where she yeah. rationalizes not jumping. Yeah, and I don't know if this is now my interpretation or if it's something that was in that long paragraph where Session she was like figuring book, it yeah. out. But like yeah. I sort of figure that if she was like going to be f- like one hundred percent faithful to her ideology about the present moment, she probably must have figured. Okay, yeah, I remember now. She must have figured out that if she jumped and killed herself, then the present moment would end. Then she would like be depriving herself of any agency and any power. And she would be in the past forever. Yeah, because she was saying something in the book. Like her thought process was something like, uh, you know, when she backed away from the bridge, that possibility of her jumping would forever just remain a possibility. And maybe mm-hmm. it's a possibility that somebody else could take, but not her, not today. Something yeah, like that. That's true. And so yeah, for, yeah. for me, I was like kind of interpreting that as, oh, okay, so she sort of like. Obey- she figured out herself. She, she obeyed her own like kind of like categorical imperative Inner for us. To yeah. the point that it saves her life, I guess. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And, That's, and also kind of a privilege again, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I for mean, her like, to be all like... At, at this point, Nathan is just do. done with her. Like, whatever yeah. They, yeah, got stuff to do. Come on, let's get yeah. out of here. And, like, yeah, like literally, you know, come on. Yeah. Um, and then police to avoid yeah and then like she gets back home that this is already the last part of the book which is also called visitation she gets back home she writes a long letter to frank to try to explain explain herself but he doesn't want to read it just like yeah (laughs) yeah um yeah like he's just sort of too upset to like kind of like think about it or like deal with it which again speaks Mm -hmm. to his personality but she's Mm -hmm. like whatever life goes on um Mm -hmm. She's taking care of her kids when she suddenly and and oh and then she almost loses her kids like that's a that's a, like a like a small event that happens right when she's in the oh, grocery oh wow I totally forgot about this yeah, bit like, but so yeah there, yeah yeah a whole bit about how when she's taking care of her kids it's kind of like a demonstration of how much she sort of lost or or has never had that sense of connection not, maternal not, connection not even just maternal connection but sort of like sort of strength of personality that she's able to kind of put herself in the here and now because she's with her kids and they they go to i think they go to poundland and then she's like sort of like oh man All right, so here's five pounds each of you can buy like five yeah. things each and then like she like loses them and she's yeah, like kind of like scrambling around to figure out what happened to them because she was so lost yeah. in thought um yeah. And I don't know if that that was oh, because she had that. gotten the call from Michelle saying that Leah was like sort of acting strange. We'll get to that later. But then mm-hmm. she basically loses her kids and it takes her a while mm-hmm. to like find them again and be like, mm-hmm. you shouldn't leave mommy alone. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, like, and also in my head, well, I don't know, in the pound lands that we've gone to, they're not that big of a store, right? Or are there really big ones? They're sort of big ones. Yeah, I oh, would say. Okay. They're like... Yeah, okay. they're like the sort of export overrun groceries. So, yeah, right. So right I feel right. like they're, not, they're they can be big. Okay, they can be. Um, <laughs> yeah, but anyway, she gets a call from Michelle saying like, uh-huh. "Yeah, so yeah, I found nah. I found these birth control pills that uh, I guess 
my wife has been taking except they're you know they're in your name so i guess i don't know if you gave them to her or she stole them from you but uh i need your help like you gotta help me figure this whole thing out um yeah. okay and then this is the part where like i start to question again where the book kind of goes the direction this book is going <laughs> Okay, like <laughs> we went from being like, "Oh shit, is yeah, this book yeah. good?" to being like, "Oh wait, okay, well, yeah, no, no." I think I think it can still be good in spite of the direction it ends up going towards okay. in the end. This part, like, okay, okay. I've been so I, lately. I've been reading um, this book, "Craft in the Real World," uh, by Matthew Celesis, and mm-hmm. it's a lot about trying to recontextualize the way we write, the way we revise, and the the way we read uh, liter- literary works. Uh, wow. based on cultural values and cultural context. Uh-huh. And he was saying that, you know, like a lot of the most Can traditional... You send me a copy. Oh, of course, dude. <laughs> it's going to be my next r r by the way. Spoiler alert. Oh, okay. Um, nice. Uh, but like... Uh, oh, you have a physical? Never yeah, mind, I got sorry. it. I got it. Uh, no, I, I, I can. Don't worry. I got you. I got okay. you. Got uh, you. <laughs> <laughs> but like, <laughs> like sketch, but yeah, okay. So Thanks, like, buddy. um, so in that book, like Celestes is like citing how a lot of the most traditional storytelling, like structures that we have, like the three act structure mm-hmm. or the hero's journey, are all based mm-hmm. on like white male cis able cultures, uh, mm-hmm. or traditions of storytelling, sure. right? Uh, and, and like Western, to, yeah. and like to the point that if the end is supposed to be considered the main site of meaning in a story, it's only because it comes after the climax in that traditional story storytelling sense. Yeah, storytelling sense. Yeah. And then he was citing another critic who had said like, mm, "This seems a bit masculo-sexual, no? <laughs> Where like, uh, yeah. you know, the meaning comes after the climax." <laughs> <laughs> when it comes yeah. to a climax. And, oh, you know, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, so, like, he was sort of implying that you, you know, like, <laughs> if we want to exp- expand, like, our sense of what literature can do, we have to stop mm-hmm. reading also, or we have to read less the ending as the main or the final word of meaning in literary mm-hmm. work. So, yeah. I, I, I was, like, bearing that in mind as I was approaching this ending. But, like, she... So Natalie goes over to Leah's house and she's like, what's going on? Like, oh, Leah's been hanging out in the Wait, sun. Wait, sorry. Can I just say before I forget? Yeah. Like, I think going back to, I mean, like, to, to add to what that book was saying, I guess. Yeah. I guess it, it, it adds to what we were, sorry, I said that multiple times, but like to, to what we were saying earlier about like Felix and Annie yeah. being the most like solid yeah, like, n- knowing characters in the whole book, but the book doesn't begin and end with them. Right. Yeah. Like they're like smack in the middle. Yeah. Ha- not even the middle. They're literally they're like two lang. Two out of four. <laughs> yeah, they're two out of four, and and um, but then yun nga, as we've said, compared to everybody, they're literally the ones who maybe would be aware of quote unquote meaning. Yeah. Or if you were to find. Yeah. Maybe your first inkling of a meaning in the book, it would probably be with them. Question. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and again, that's all. yeah. I was going to forget. Oh, so no, that's, that's that's a good point, though. I, and that's why, I, like, to end it with, to that point, to end it with Natalie and Leah mm-hmm. rekindling sort of the childhood sense of their friendship. Yeah. In a strange way. It, they do this in a very yeah. strange way. I, I at least my my sense under of it. really sad circumstances. Yeah, really sad circumstances. Like uh, it 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 rubs it rubs off really weird, in the it yeah. rubs me in the wrong way. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because they're like meant to enabling each other. Yeah. Okay. So let's we should say what happened. So she goes to Leah's Go house, ahead. and she sees like Leah's hanging out in the sun. So she tries to lock talk Leah down, and then she the thing that eventually kind of gets Leah on her side is she sort of gives this long speech that I feel like in a Hollywood movie <laughs> would belong in a Hollywood movie and and, mm-hmm. and, and it's it's sort of not like, a BBC two movie. But like yeah, like but her sort Hollywood of like, movie. like an inspiring speech, her saying like, you know, like it, this may be an ugly thing to say, but the system that we're born into, you know, it's just the way it is. Like and we can do nothing about it. But like, you know, she's just basically affirming the whole experience of what she went through 
rather yeah. than questioning it in any or challenging it in any significant way. And she started yeah. just like basically telling Leah, like, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So fucking deal with yeah, it. Yeah, deal with yeah. it. Yeah. And Leah's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Like, so what? again, complete opposite of what Felix and yeah, Annie yeah. were trying to do with each other. Yeah. And it's so weird. Like, even if we're on Annie's side on that, Felix then had like a sense of, you know, uh, confidence, as we mentioned, for yeah. him to be able to say those things. And and then Annie also knew herself in- enough and knew Felix enough to know that she could rebuttal him yeah. or refute him. Whereas Leah and, you know, despite them being childhood yeah, friends. Yeah, this is the closest that the book can go back to what happened between Felix and Annie. Yes. But, yeah. 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 Exactly. It's just them accepting it na lang and being like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're so you're so right. But it's like, yeah. So yes, it, Paul. <laughs> Sorry. So if, you, <laughs> so if you're gonna like, I think if you're gonna read it in that sort of traditional way of the end is the site of meaning, mm-hmm. then like Zadie is sort of challenging, I guess, the reader. Like, okay, well, my assumption is that you, as the reader, are most likely to be in the class system. Or the, the mm-hmm. class tier that that Natalie and Leah One are now. And like yeah. if, if this is how it goes for you, maybe you mm-hmm. should reassess like your yeah, priorities. Like maybe dude. think about your life <laughs> yeah, question. Like mark. your your argument should be more like yeah. you know, about like 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 between Felix and Annie rather than mm-hmm. what's going on here. Where then it suddenly segues to like them realizing, hey, you know that murder that happened on that one road? I think I know who did it, or I think I know who had something to do with it, and they decide to call yeah. the police on Nathan. Which yeah, I'm like, this exactly. is a weird <laughs> note. That- do they? S- sorry, did they say how they? I can't remember now what okay. made them realize it might be Nathan. No, no so did they bring back the scar? Okay, I, they didn't. Did bring they back, hear I mean, about the scar? No, no, they didn't bring back the scar. But so Natalie basically, um, she figures out. She's able to piece two and two together that. She saw Nathan near the road where the murder had happened. She, she yeah. remember that when she was there, she only learned that there was an incident. But later on, yeah. she sees a news report that says it was definitively a murder. And then yeah. she was like, Nathan was kind of jumpy. Uh, so she was like already suspecting oh, yeah. him. And she was like, this guy's yeah, sus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, okay, dude. Yeah. And then, and then at some point, he mentions the name of the other guy he was with. And he was like... Man, you know, sometimes when I'm with that guy, I have to control him. Like, he kind of brings things out of hand. So she yeah. sort of puts two and two together. And she's like, oh, he probably yeah. had something to do with it. Maybe he mm-hmm. might not have necessarily been the one who killed him. And he wasn't. Didn't, yeah. But, like, yeah. He, but like he but knows. He was there. Yeah. So, he knows something. Yeah, he knows something about it. So I guess we got to call the cops on this guy. Like, yeah. okay. Again, she was. Uh, and can I just say, that's kind of the, a part where it makes me remember, oh, yeah, she's a lawyer. Yeah. Yeah, wait. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, right? man. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shit. So it's a it's a very strange note to end the book on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like that being said, like I wonder not if, like, you know, because at least like we can say this book is not. Did you stumble upon a insight or something? Yeah, no, I was ju- I just sorry, you heard me gasp. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, sorry. Like, What's going on I, there? Well, sorry. <laughs> I gotta know. I gotta know. You gotta tell me about because, it. Because no, it made me remember how you said either during On Beauty or Autograph Man that the book usually ends with every all the characters gathering right to to for some reason okay, or other. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and this one did not. Yeah. Yeah, but well, I know. Okay, that's all. I, that's yeah, all I no, remembered, it, and I was like, it "Oh, bro- yeah. it broke the pattern. It broke that pattern yeah. that we revealed in the last episode." But then, I, I mean, it broke a lot of patterns. But I mean, okay. Like, here's the thing: I was also going to say was that, um, because this book is like very obviously non chronological. Like, it it takes the time to goes back and forth. Give us one character, and then give that person's backstory in another person's backstory. Uh, in the third part of the book, which is the er- chronologically earliest part of the book, so it's very jumbled up, and it made me mm-hmm. wonder, like, like you know, like is that then sort of like what we were sa- what you were saying earlier about um, having the most profound moments of these book this book come like in the middle or not in even the in the middle but before the middle, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. you know, is it, is it worth wondering if there's a version of this book where Felix's story is the end of the book? 
Right. Where, you know, like, yeah. it follows a sort Probably. of traditional storytelling structure. Oh, that would be, yeah, that would be really interesting to see, be, like, if, if you were to imagine yeah. the uh, uh, Leah, Natalie, and then Nathan, and then the last visitation part being chronological, and then, like, a quasi-epilogue would be, like, a flashback. Yeah, because I... I've seen some people online describe this as like, like, like a secret murder mystery in its own way, which makes sense because that's mm, yeah. we see them figuring it out in real time as yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But then, yeah. like at the same time, you know, like if if she was also gonna obey that structure, it mm-hmm. would have been like an interesting subversion of it to go like, all right, so they solve the murder. Mm-hmm. The murder has been solved. We know who's been involved in it. Uh, we know who had to do we with it. We solved the murder. The and murder now, has been solved. let's go into the life motivations of the person who died. Yeah. You know, like, that, I, yeah. that would have been yeah, an interesting... Yeah. But then, that's why I also... I'm not sure if if that was then part I, of her intention to, like, subvert right. that structure, you know. Right. All those things. Or if it was just her being like, maybe this is where I should put all the foreshadowing... Yeah. In this early part so that when all this other shit happens. You yeah. Kind of like it's just in terms of stru- outline structure. Maybe. Yeah. Because like from yeah. the moment you meet Felix, you're like, oh, this is probably the guy who dies, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Like there's That's a, true. Only one That's reason true. that they could have revealed this in the last part of the first e- yeah. part of the book. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. And again, because you could also kind of section off that his whole bit. Yeah. As its own like. Part. Right, right. I mean, like its own I mean, yeah, story. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you were to like make an excerpt of, yeah, like if I were to make an excerpt of the book, I would probably do that part of the. And you know, you, and again, it adds to you saying that his and Annie's conversation is like the best scene. Yeah, in the whole book. Yeah, but, I wonder yeah. also if it's like. Now this is gonna be me reaching, but like, I wonder if it's one of those things where like. Zadie by deliberately privileging, I guess, the perspectives of the more privileged characters in this book. Mm. Is it the way of, like, also, I don't know, representing how London on a broader scale, like, presents itself as this very prominent, as pro- yeah. privileged place when yeah. really the diverse, you know, place, diverse, but, yeah. But yeah. but yeah, you know, that's all for show. And the case is if you yeah. go on the ground and you see how people are living, you know, a lot yeah. of people are struggling even more so now. Yes. Like, yeah. Like that book was I'm written sure. pre-Brexit. Yeah. Pre- <laughs> pre, Way pre, 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 pre-Brexit. So pre-Brexit that no yeah. one, like you could just say exit and people would not cringe. Yeah, yeah. Or be triggered by anything. Pre-Brexit and pre-pandemic. Like, Jesus. Pre-pandemic, pre when this book came out, everyone still thought that the uh, worst thing that could happen to us was the end of the year 2012. Yeah. Yeah, literally. So, yeah. Like, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Matt, the worst how, thing. The naive babes that we were. Uh, we truly, in 2012. How old were you in 2012? I was 20. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. I was 20, man. You were 20? I was 20. Yeah, I was born oh, in 92, so I just have to have 20 to that. Anyway. Oh, okay. All right, so we're at the end of the book. Now, Amanda, I know you're not going to require this book, but yeah. I want to know <laughs> if you would recommend or not require No, I would recommend it now. And you recommend book. it now? You would ask yeah, me yeah, at the yeah, beginning. Yeah. yeah, in the beginning, I was really like, uh, I don't know if I'd even talk to anyone else about this book I ever mean, again. You know, but yeah. In, yeah, Sorry, now, in hindsight, in hindsight, I think I would... This is how I was thinking of, you know, since, since we realized that we might like this book. Um, I was like, I think I'd recommend it with a disclaimer. You sure, know what I mean? Sure. Like if somebody was so if somebody was like, "Oh, I'm trying to get into something different. What would you recommend?" I'd be like, "Maybe this shit because <laughs> yeah. it's a wild ride yeah. and you'll only maybe like it after talking <laughs> about it on your podcast." But, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I or like maybe I'd be like, "Oh, if you Yeah, I think if you'd want to like read something completely different then you yeah. then you could then I would recommend this to a person. But I wouldn't, like, outrightly, like, talk about it with people and be like, hey, read this book. Like, what you just did with Ted Lasso, I would not do that, yeah. probably. I mean, like, hey, look, the way I see it is, like, that's sort of what I like about us doing this show. 
mean, mm-hmm. like, not that we'll, not that we need a show for us to read the same book together, but I feel like, mm-hmm. I'm, yeah, we, like the the, lot of that the fact that we've committed to this, like, has forced yeah. us to like really reckon and deal with the book and think about it, yeah, generously and Absolutely. deeply in a way that we ended up liking yeah. it in the end. Yeah, you know? okay, yeah, truly. Like, I, I would like, I will be honest with the audience and say, na, you know, when we were kind of leading up to today's recording i was so scared (laughs) yeah like we were saying in the beginning that we're nervous but like no really i was super nervous because i was like i'm really worried i'm not gonna be able to bring anything to the table um because i was so confused to grow at the time about at the time so like an hour ago about the 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 book and if i really understood it yeah but yeah no now you're right like reckoning it reckoning with it with you for a show episode has really helped me to be all like okay yeah maybe people should read this book was this a best- bestseller i'm gonna like oh it is well you know it was maybe the real rec room okay is all the people you read with along the way that's is that our new tagline i don't know it could be okay. I, might ma- I might make a bit out of it Anyway, don't yeah. do that. Yeah, needless Maybe to say, the real visitation. <laughs> yeah. I've been wanting to make a, I've been wanting to make a visitation joke this entire time, but I could not. We should I have said, like, not. the first part of the book, the, the visitation. The, yeah, exactly. The, 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 the second. No, part. because then that's gonna make me accidentally say, you know, Hail Mary or something. Okay. No, but I, I said like I wanted to be like maybe the real visitation, is, the murders you solve along the way okay i don't know visitation of knowledge Who's i mean okay I, one thing i will say like sort of the like just I, I had this thought in the back of my head but like i will say like part of the difficulty we had with this book at first was like reconciling all those points on our own and and like to the detriment of like certain details that i think like if if you were catching them as you were reading the book would have like enhanced the experience somehow like okay these are like very small minor details that i noticed in the book that i think if i were not trying to reckon with what it was really about i would not have noticed it but like for example Mm -hmm. uh and and these are this could be me totally extrapolating but like natalie natalie and nathan after she changes her name from keisha to natalie natalie and nathan have the same initials nb oh Right, hmm. and I mean, like the book is like initial, so I don't know. Yeah, if, you know, the book title, so I don't know if that's, that's... pointing so- something else to us. But yeah. like one that is definitely more concrete and founded in the text is that remember how Leah has like those random chapters that are Mark thirty-seven, where she sort of yeah. explains the importance of the number thirty-seven and yeah. how it's like a secret magic number that I guess defines the universe or anything, mm-hmm. right? Maybe that's their age. Okay. When you go to uh, Natalie's part of the book, mm-hmm. right? It's numbered one to one eighty. Yeah, there's no thirty-seven. What the hell? Go back to it. I promise that's, you, you will not find so a thirty-seven. Scary. It skips from thirty-six no, to thirty-eight. You made me, <laughs> I don't know. You know what? The way that you like talked about it made me scared for it's some mi- reason. It's also midnight, so like, yeah, it's like I'm not trying yeah, to invoke yeah, yeah. a ghost, but yeah, there's no thirty-seven. No, do not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So like. I mean, like, I, I mean, that's I'm crazy. saying that detail, but, like, there's a part of me that's, like, but I don't know what that adds to my experience in the book. Yeah. Except that, like, yeah. creeped you out. <laughs> yeah. I, and nothing about this book was, like, super, well, I mean, yeah. It, it's that, creepy maybe, parts, I guess, the you know, sexists and the racists. Oh, and, and also the, the sexists, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. you're right. Uh, yeah, hmm. that's probably it. Anyway. Anyway, so so you would uh, uh, that was a good book. <laughs> um, yeah, I enjoyed it. Would I you require it? I recommend it. I I would have okay. required it, except I'm now like reassessing my personal ratings after <laughs> after last episode, where I'm like, wait, do I really want to re- require Required. on beauty? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess I'm just, what I'm just saying is that the, you know this rating system is a work in progress, and um, mm. maybe we'll change things up in the future. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. But uh, the future. Speaking of the future, our mm-hmm. next episode next week will be on swing time. So make sure you read in on that. Next week? Two weeks from now. Sorry, two weeks from now. I 
Keep right. thinking next week. I got right, super no. nervous. <laughs> yeah. I, don't worry, I wouldn't do that to you. Um, nope, anyway, thanks. so there's that. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. That's it for us on this episode. Right? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you really I like mean, you this to. episode, if you really like, if you've been listening to us for a while, I hope you uh, give us a little rating. Subscribe to us if you haven't. Uh, give us a review mm-hmm. it, it's a cool thing like i noticed um we this was something that we found out recently is that people have been leaving us reviews but they don't show up somehow in our apple um, podcast i don't know if it's region yeah. locked but we discovered that someone had left a really nice uh review about our normal people song of achilles and cersei episode so thank you for that yeah um, thanks and we it's hope really kind of you, you yeah if you really like our show um, you could also similarly leave uh, a review to direct people our way. Um, we are also on. Or social- you could also, uh, if you follow us on Instagram, on social media, is that what you're going to say? Yeah, you could tweet us say, your reviews. Media. You yeah, can comment. Are, you can DM us, my dudes. We are Talk on Twitter to us. and Instagram uh, mm-hmm. at the Send Rec us memes. Room Pod. That's Rex yeah. spelled with R E Q. And I should also mention we are now also on Kofi. So Kofi. if you wanna support, buy us a Kofi, support us in a little extra way, you know the mm-hmm. the the profits of it will be split evenly between us towards like production <laughs> and of the show. and also to production of the show. Yeah, yeah, basically. I mean, like we bought mics for the show, That's, so yeah, we, like we to, did. We actually did. Know, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so any way that you can support, we really appreciate it, especially mm-hmm. as we work towards the future of this show. Future ominous. Mm-hmm. This look as we were saying earlier. It'll all circle back. It will. It'll circle it will. back. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. I guess okay. that's it from us for now. Yeah. And Thanks for listening. As always, I thought you were gonna say N W, <laughs> and then just end it there. And <laughs> as always, what W? <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Yay. (laughs) That's a good one. (laughs) Okay. Thanks for listening to The Rec Room. This episode was edited by me. Our artwork is by Mandy. Our theme song is 64 Sundays by Twin Musicom, which is licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license. Check out more of their music at www.twinmusicom.org. For more updates on The Rec Room, follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Rec Room Pod. Rec spelled R-E-Q. 